Hello. I'm going to make this short video here. Hopefully it'll be short. About changing your broken USB jack and your fractal. And uh, I'm not a professional uh, video guy, but I'm going to try to, you know, make this here and, and help some guys that have this, this, uh, this problem. I have the new jack here. It's going to go in, and as you can see, there's supposed to be a little plastic doodad inside there. And uh, this one's broke, and so it's non-op. So it should be pretty simple to change, but uh, in case you want to do this yourself, it shouldn't be a big deal. Let's go ahead and make a video here and, uh, and help everybody out. All right, thanks. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off by taking off this end plate right here. And so uh, I'll go ahead and speed up the video. I don't like really using uh, power, you know, screwdrivers and stuff like that on these smaller devices like this. Uh, I like that. Don't want to strip anything out. So uh, I know it takes a little bit longer, but I personally use uh, these screwdrivers like this to pull them apart. So let's go ahead and get the ends off. Okay, so now that the side panels are off, we're going to go ahead and take the rubber feet feet off the back of the unit here because those actually hold this panel together and then uh, we'll take some screws across the front here and then we should have this back down to the chassis where we can see the components. Okay, so now we're taking the screws out of the front of the panel here and I just want you to note that these screws, they're a little bit shorter than the ones on the side panels, which are a little bit bigger if you can see the difference there. So. I like using these little magnetic cups to get it Harbor Freight, kind of keep track of everything. So let me, go ahead, let me go ahead and pull these four out, and then we'll see what it looks like inside. All right, the screws are out of the front. We took them off the feet in the back. Side panels are off. Let's go ahead and just gently lift this up. And as you can see, there we have exposure to the inside. There are a couple of ribbon cables, kind of like on a computer. And so uh, those are held in place, it looks like, with a little bit of uh, silicone. So, but on the actual board itself, I'm not sure if you can kind of spot this, uh, doesn't look like they're held in. So let's go ahead and, uh, and give those a real gentle tug. And uh, just we'll work them side. They are held in with a little bit of silicone. So we'll go ahead and work on those a little bit. Shouldn't take much pressure. There's one. And uh, I think if we turn it up on its edge, like so, see if we can get a shot of that. We can see that um, these guys come right out. And they'll only go back in one way, just like on your PC. And here we go. This uh, top half, we can go ahead and set that aside. Because the guy that we're after is actually is right here, down below. And... Uh, I'm going to take my screwdriver here and we'll point to it. It's right there. That's our guy. So in order to get that out, we're going to have to lift this board up. And, uh, and we're going to have to use some solder wick on the other side to go ahead and do that. So in order to pull this, uh, let me flip this camera around. There we go. So in order to pull this board, all these nuts are going to have to come off here. Okay. And... Uh, We'll want to take and unplug this switch from the board so we don't have to remove it. And uh, what else we got here? And all, of course, all the screws that have a little bit of uh, a red Loctite on them there. Power supply here. We're going to undo that. And, uh, and then this guy should come right out. So let's go ahead and work on that, and then, uh, and then we'll be back. I do want to mention that when you're taking these plastic nuts and stuff off here, uh, you can just use a socket. This guy here is uh, 5 eighths, and it really is just hand tight. And you never want to um, take these guys and wrench them on there because uh, that jack will break. I promise you it'll break. And so just finger tight is all it needs and, and just lightly finger tight too. Not, no kind of hard pressure on those guys or uh, you're going to have some regrets. And once you kind of loosen them up, uh, you can just spin them off. Uh, like so you can see it's a very simple deal there One last thing you're going to need to do to get the board out after you remove the screws here Set those aside are these allens right here on the side of these XLRs 
because these XLRs, as you can see, they're soldered to the board, they're stationary, and uh, and we're going to have to uh, to loosen those guys up in order to release this, and uh, and then we should be able to start pulling the board out nice and gentle. Okay. All right. So let's go through this one more time. We took the screws off the XLRs. We took the plastic nuts off all these uh, inputs here, outputs. Um, we removed the screws here, here on each corner, center, and don't forget this guy right here in the middle of the board. Let me back up a little bit. We got a guy here. Okay. Another over here, and then one on this side, and then all the way over here. Once you've done that, you've taken the power supply wire off. There'll be a zip tie right around this post. You go ahead and clip that guy, and you should very easily be able to just kind of slide that guy out just like so. And then you'll have the board completely released, and we'll be able to turn it over and, uh, and pull out that jack and replace it. Okay, we're going to set that aside. I'm going to set the phone down, and we're going to warm up the soldering iron, and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Okay, we're back. So one of the tools that I really like to use is I have a very nice Weller uh, soldering station. It's uh, a WES-51. I use that because I, I do a lot of tube amp work and stuff. Uh, I run about 750 degrees on that. Now, another thing that I use a lot of for printed circuit boards whenever I do repairs is I use this stuff right here. It's just a soldering wick. It works really nice for me. I know there's lots of different ways. There's solder suckers and all kinds of things. But on print circuit boards, I really, really like to use that. So we're going to flip this guy over. And again, this is the jack that we're after right here. Let me see if I can get it in front of the camera. Get something to point with here. And so these guys, there's six connectors here. These kind of pins hold this guy together. And then we have these four. And if you look very closely at the solder, these guys do not solder together here. We do not want to short those pins out. So the method that, I, that you're going to use is we're going to take the soldering iron and we're going to warm up this with the wick in place and it's going to pull that solder out. Let me see if I can do this um, on the camera here. And this stuff is really nice because it pulls the stuff out. The name of the game on this is just be go slow and be gentle. Wish I could get a better camera angle here. Hang on, maybe I could prop this guy up. Let's see here. What have I got? How about a can of deoxid? I like that. Okay. So. And this soldering wick kind of comes in a lot of different sizes and things. Uh, you know, that stuff I had there at first was pretty thick. The stuff's a little thinner. So, let's just go through and see if we can warm this solder up and then just wick it on out of there. And sometimes, you know, once you get it pretty close, you're going to kind of have to give your component a little bit of a tug to pull it out and then clean up the hole <clears throat> afterwards and get the rest of the solder out of there and get it nice and clean. You want to be very gentle when you're working with this stuff because these traces on the other side of the board can come up and get them loose. So not too much heat, just enough to kind of loosen it up, pull that solder out of there and get out of there. Okay, so after you've uh, cleaned all this old solder out and you got everything kind of back in place here, and you stick your new jack in there, and we're going to very gently solder that guy into place. Okay. All right, fellas, it's all done. And uh, <clears throat> flip this guy around. I didn't go through the reassembly process. It just reversed taking it apart. Everything went back in. There's the new unbroken jack. So we'll set this guy off the side. I got my Mac here with um, AX8 Edit on it. And plug in the USB here and uh, let's see what happens right now it shows disconnected make sure we get this guy plugged in correctly here and there it is and boom it works look at that
So there it is. I know I didn't go through in like great detail about how to do that, but um, I guess the only advice I have is when you're pulling the old solder off that board, just be gentle. There's very thin traces there. They're easy to break. If you get too much heat on there, you're going to have some problems. So just take your time. Use a lot of finesse. Wick it out. Do what you got to do. And uh, when you get the old holes cleaned out, the new uh, plug, which of course looks just like this, will go in, gently solder it, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right, guys. I hope this helps. Again, I'm a terrible uh, video guy, but... Um, I know there's a lot of guys with broken USB, so maybe this will help you out. Thanks. Bye.